Are you? Cool. All the clocks are different, so yeah. that means. Wait, can somebody give us what the actual time is to the minute? 11. Oh, 11. 11.01. Okay. <laughs> So we can begin then with the opening prayers in the prayer book, beginning on page one, and we'll do once in uh, English and once in Tibetan. All mother sentient beings, especially those enemies who hate me, obstructors who harm me, and those who create obstacles on my path to liberation and all-knowingness, may they experience happiness and be separated from suffering. I will quickly establish them in the state of the most perfect and precious Buddhahood. <coughs> Page two. <coughs> Thus, until I achieve enlightenment, I perform virtuous deeds with body, speech, and mind. Until death, I perform <coughs> virtuous deeds with body, speech, and mind. From now until this time tomorrow, I perform virtuous deeds with body, speech, and mind. <coughs> Yes, <laughs> 
Three. All sentient beings, limitless as the sky, take refuge in the glorious kind Lama Vajradhara, the embodiment of the body, speech, mind, qualities, and activities of the Buddhas of the Ten Directions and Three Times, source of the 84,000 categories of the teaching and Lord of the Sanghas. We take refuge in the kind root lama and lineage lamas. We take refuge in the deities of the mandalas of the Irams. We take refuge in all the exalted Buddhas. We take refuge in the perfect Dharma. We take refuge in the excellent order of the Sanghas. We take refuge in all the noble Dhakas, Dakinis, and Dharma guardians, possessors of the Eye of Wisdom. Until I attain the heart of enlightenment, I take refuge in all the Buddhas. I take refuge in the Dharma and likewise in the assembly of the Bodhisattvas. As the previous Buddhas embraced the enlightened mind and progressed on the Bodhisattva's path, I too, for the benefit of all sentient beings, give birth to Bodhicitta and apply myself to accomplish the stages of the path. Sangha most excellent, I take refuge until enlightenment is reached. By the merit of generosity and other good deeds, may I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all sentient beings. <laughs> Dagger, Jensen, 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 Jensen,
and of our May all mother sentient beings boundless as the sky have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be liberated from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they never be separated from the happiness which is free from sorrow. May they rest in equanimity, free from attachment and aversion. Also, Pure Book, page 5. Om Nam Gadai Nyan Bhe Sam Jin Dham Jhe De Wa Tan De Ve Ju Dhan De Mbar Ju Jhe Dung Ara Dhan Dung Ara Ki Ju Dhan Ji Wai Ju Jhe Dung Ara Me Be De Wa Dhan Ngamen De Wai Ju Six. Refuge of all sentient beings without exception, divine subjugator of terrifying Maras, together with their host of demons, the one who understands all realities without exception exactly as they are, transcending conqueror, together with your disciples, please come here to this place. The ground is sprinkled with scented water and strewn with flowers. It is adorned with Meru, the supreme mountain, the four continents and the sun and moon. As a Buddha field, I offer it. May all sentient beings attain the happiness of the Buddha fields. Whatever merit I have gathered through prostrations, offerings, confession, rejoicing, beseeching, and praying, for the sake of the enlightenment of all sentient beings, all this I dedicate. <laughs> Namo, to the Lama of utterly pure appearance and existence, I offer the fundamental ground of appearance and existence. I supplicate you to thoroughly <coughs> liberate the three realms. Please grant your blessings and overturn the depths of samsara. Sublime master, wish-fulfilling jewel, crown ornament, the inconceivable, inexpressible mind of the victorious ones, the one endowed with the five wisdoms of omniscience, gracious one, the embodiment of love, precious protector of beings, I supplicate you from within the essence of mind. Please grant your blessings from within the innate nature. 
Please bless me that I may realize the dharmakaya that is beyond intellect, this primordially unborn, completely pure mind, transcend and conquer the one thus gone, foe destroyer of afflictive emotions, completely perfected Buddha, endowed with logic and virtue, the one gone to bliss, knower of the world, captain, tamer of beings, the unexcelled teacher of gods and men, I respectfully prostrate, completely touching my head to the stainless feet of the unequaled Shakya King. At the time of your birth, leader of two-legged beings, taking seven steps on this great earth, you proclaim, I am supreme in this world. To you who are wise, even then, I prostrate. Possessing a body of complete purity, your sublime form is excellent. An ocean of primordial wisdom, you are like a golden mountain, the one whose renown is evident throughout the three worlds, protector of supreme attainment, to you I prostrate. To you who are endowed with the supreme arts, whose face is like an immaculate moon, to you the one with a complexion like gold, I prostrate. A flawless one such as you among the three levels of existence is most exquisite. Unparalleled omniscient one, to you I prostrate. Supreme among humans, captain of those to be tamed, the one thus gone who severs the all-binding fetters, who with senses pacified is utterly pacified and skilled in peace. To that one, the one who dwelled at Shravasti, I prostrate. Refuge endowed with great compassion, totally omniscient one who indicates the way, ground basis for oceans of merit and qualities, I prostrate to the one thus gone. The pure cause free from attachments, the virtue that liberates from the lower realms, the altogether supreme ultimate truth, to the pacifying dharma I prostrate. Having been liberated, they also reveal the path to liberation. Thoroughly respectful of the three higher trainings, they are a field of sublime qualities. To the Sangha, I also prostrate. And then back to page nine. Okay. <clears throat> oh, no more noise, no more noise, no more noise. Jean 
I prostrate to the youthful Manjushri, to those in the worlds of the ten directions, however many there are, all the lions among humans who appear during the three times, to all of them without exception, I pay homage with respectful body, speech, and mind. The force of my aspiration prayer for excellent conduct brings all the victorious ones directly to mind. Bowing down with bodies as numerous as atoms in the realms, I prostrate to all the victorious ones. In a single atom, there are Buddhas as numerous as atoms, each residing in the midst of their sons and daughters. Like that, I imagine the whole Dharma Dhatu completely filled with victorious ones. To those with oceans of inexhaustible praiseworthy qualities, with sounds containing oceans of tones of melodic speech, I express the qualities of all the victorious ones. I praise all the sugatas. With the finest flowers, the finest garlands, music, ointments, supreme parasols, supreme lamps, and the finest incense, I make offerings to the victorious ones. With the finest claws, supreme scents, and fine powders equal to Mount Meru, all displayed in supreme and magnificent ways, I make offerings to those victorious ones. With vast and unsurpassable offerings, I venerate all the victorious ones. Through the power of faith and excellent conduct, I prostrate and offer to the victorious ones. Whatever negative actions I have performed with body, speech, and also mind, overpowered by desire, aggression, and stupidity, I confess each and every one of them. I rejoice in everyone's merit, the victorious ones of the ten directions, the bodhisattvas, the pratikya buddhas, those in training, those beyond training, and all beings. I request the protectors, the lamps of the worlds of the ten directions, who passing through the stages of awakening, attain Buddhahood beyond attachment, to turn the unsurpassable Dharma wheel. I supplicate with my palms joined together, those who intend to demonstrate Nirvana, to remain for kalpas as numerous as atoms in the realms, for the welfare and happiness of all beings. I dedicate whatever slight virtue is accumulated, through prostrating, offering, confessing, rejoicing, requesting, and supplicating to enlightenment. Page 16. So page 16. Please turn the wheel of the Dharma, of the two vehicles and their combination, according to the dispositions and mental capacities of sentient beings. Yes, <laughs> 
Um, so the first verse on page 143 reads, Wonderful qualities arise from yoga, but they dwindle if you cease your practice. There is progress and there is loss. Understanding both of these, increase what is truly positive and enter into certainty. Um, does anyone know where we are, happen to know where we are in the alternate book by chance? Yeah. Yeah, because this seems totally different. Yeah, um, that's okay. Even though the the chapter is the same. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Two eighty two, oh, Virginia. Um. I think it's 55, 20, 282. From practice arises wisdom. From not practicing, decrease of wisdom. Knowing this twofold path leading to gain and loss, you should establish yourself in such a way that your wisdom increases. Ne <laughs> Um, so this is pretty much as it, um, you know, very straightforward as it's written in the verses, um, mainly emphasizing the fact that um, from wholesome actions, there is an abundance of merit that develops and there's progress on the path. Um, and uh, on the other hand, when we slip into unwholesome actions, um, then this uh, causes our merit to become exhausted um, and uh, does not create an abundance of um, good qualities. Mm. 
ngowala Um, so the word here that is translated as yoga is nal naljor, um, and so nal um, is actually something like like resting, um, and jor jor is um, referring to like like union within resting. Um, meaning what it is that one is, is unified with is the essence of the true nature of mind itself. Um, so that is what the yo yoga here is referring to. So whatever it is that is natural. So that word nal um, it has this meaning of kind of what it is, what is natural, what is the natural state. Um, and then, um, so what it is that is natural is the um, true essence of uh, the true nature of phenomena, the true nature of mind itself. Um, so as long as you are abiding, one is abiding within that, um, then there is an automatic increase and in abundance of merit that is developed. On the other hand, what is not natural is the um, identification with the um, mind of proliferation, which is uh, all of the habits of non-virtue, the afflictive emotions, all the discursive thoughts, and so forth. So when, um, with the afflictive emotions as the condition, um, then when afflictions arise and we are not abiding within the natural state, instead we are identifying with the temporary obscurations, um, so an, an obscuration such as anger arises, um, and we have some sort of meaning, reason, um, that justifies that anger, like we are s sort of uh, following whatever perception it is um, that we are hanging on to with regard to the object of our anger. Um, and then based on that, then we engage in conduct, um, which is the nature of non-virtue. And so then this leads to the diminishment <coughs> of um, merit and good fortune. <coughs> and then the next uh, verse reads, cut down the tree, destroy the whole forest. From the forest, danger arises. If you cut away the trees and the roots, O oh monks, you will pass from sorrow. So let's see if the alternate version is any clearer. Um, cut down, so this is, this is um, yeah, a little different. Cut down the wood, not the tree. From the wood arises danger. Cut down wood and brushwood and be free from the wood, O oh monks. Kalakudu. <laughs> Would the bouquet like sick chip like wood and tree chap are you But in English here it says the wood cut bogre, shing cut uh jeju yumare. Maybe, but um yeah, I don't know the distinction in Tibetan the word is the same, so I don't know how to in a that yet on the uh um Kirango <laughs> 
so he said that actually he this um verse is a little bit mysterious to him he's not really sure what it means actually but it might be um as you were suggesting that um you know that it that mainly it is the wood or dead wood that kind of leads to danger because then if a little bit of fire then you can quickly have a um a forest fire so to cut away the wood and the brush um, and then um, there's not the danger, um, the same danger of a forest fire. Um, and so when the same way, because the afflictive emotions are like fire and negative karma, or negative actions and afflictive emotions are like fire. Once they kind of ignite um, and the conditions are there, they can just take over. Um, so mainly here, it seems that uh, the and, and the root really being ignorance. Um, so to cut um, uh, specifically the root of ignorance um, and to kind of clean up the, the, the forest, um, making it so there's not the potential there for the afflictive emotions to blaze and take over. Um, and then with this kind of attention, eventually then this leads to the state of our hardship. The next line is, as long as a man is attached to women, his smallest desire is not destroyed right away. It will bind him, this will bind him completely like a suckling calf to its mother. Um, so the alternate verse reads, as long as a tiny bit of brushwood, so that's interesting, of a man towards women is not cut down, he has a mind in bondage, like a suckling calf towards its mother. Mm. Mm-hmm. Tedy Major <laughs> Um, So mainly here, um, sort of using this example of like romantic or um, sexual attachment as kind of the root of um, what causes one really to circle in cyclic existence. Um, So as it is said, you know, we have been circling in cyclic existence since beginningless time in samsara. Um, and um, there, yet there are also these uh, different um, periods uh, where there is like greater kind of wholesomeness and purity and then periods where there's more degeneration. So for instance, at the beginning of the Kalpa, um, there, um, it is said that the lifespan of beings uh, is, is like around 80,000 years. Um, And there are very few (coughs) afflictive emotions. The mind streams of beings are not so coarse. 
Um, and there are, there's the afflictive emotions are so minimal um, that beings don't even have to eat solid food. Um, and there isn't kind of the coarse um, like attraction of um, sexual attraction between the sexes. Um, and so, a bit, but then as the times become more and more degenerate, then the afflictive emotions become more and more coarse. Um, and then there are stronger and stronger um, habitual tendencies that take root um, or karmic imprints. Um, and so um, it's, but, the, but this is something that, for instance, uh, if you is sort of don't, it, it really kind of comes down to the karmic imprint, the habitual tendency. Like in the beginning, uh, for instance, if somebody has never uh, had any alcohol, um, they haven't ever tasted alcohol. And when they first taste alcohol, it actually is really unappealing. Um, it tastes very kind of bitter um, and, and gross. And maybe people don't like it at first. Um, but then the one kind of develops a habit, one develops a, a liking to it little by little over time. Um, and so it is in the same way with all objects of attachment. Um, it's sort of propelled by karmic imprint. Um, and these, imp uh, these imprints intensify and solidify um, through repetition. Konki kunda lakpa hi dani kinzi chu banzo devara iya xinyangende hivi lamni lulenzoos. So then the next verse reads, cut away the self you hold so dear as you would a faded autumn lotus. Earnestly take up this path of peace, the passage from sorrow as taught by the Buddha. Um, so then um, the alternate verse reads, cut off affection toward yourself as you'd pluck an autumn lily with your hand. Develop the path to peace, the nibbana taught by the well gone one. Tati, Jetan Tira Wangazo, Tindido Lag Meadows, some good Jetanga to that new Mumba Lagudua, Tindi in the new Mumba Chumi Chevi Gabla, Tinichi, Yumbatpa, Pancho Gore, Sungdua, Penangola, make your devils, Lola Yana, Pana, make your devils. Panto Lana Kutulo, no turn or make your Lama Segrua, or the Tanagi Chigures. Temajin, thank you, Kongji, for now. You are quite eligible. Quite a couple, couple of shows, no show, cheer, cheer, no grow. Then do allow you now. So whether we're um, the, so the root of the afflictive emotions is self grasping. Um, so when um, even with even just a little bit of self grasping, or even just a small kind of glimmer of affliction, um, the moment that that is identified, we should try to uproot it immediately or abandon it completely. Um, just like that example that is often given, like even um, with the kind of vigilance that we would um, try to put out a fire on our heads, like if our head were to catch fire um, or our clothing, you know, our body were to catch fire, we would just immediately um, like get rid of or take off the clothing um, as fast as we can. So this is um, the way to also approach the um, habits of affliction because again, when they take root and then they're repeated, then they become strong imprints. So the moment that the afflictions arise to recognize them and to immediately do what needs to be done to abandon them or to apply the antidote um, is the instruction here. Mm -hmm. So then the next um, line is here I will stay in the summer, in the winter, as well as the spring. So thinks the fool. He never dreams that obstacles might rise before him. Uh, and so this alternate version says, I'll live here in the rainy season, 
Here in the winter and summer, the fool thinks he does not see his danger. What means? Um, so what is we really being pointed to here is the truth of impermanence that um, it is a um, you know based on mistaken perception that we kind of uh, think it fall into an idea of the you know permanence like being around for a long time um, when uh, in fact in sort of having plans and assuming that things will continue to be this way or will become this way in the future and so forth um, when really the truth of the matter is is that every single moment everything is constantly changing um, so there's no real security or certainty whatsoever um, yeah, mm-hmm. regarding the future. Mm-hmm. Then the next verse is, Death approaches and sweeps away the man attached to his children and cattle. Death approaches and takes hold of him in the same way a raging river carries off a sleeping village. So here, then the alternate verse reads, if a man's intoxicated by sons and cattle, death carries him away as a great flood takes a sleeping village. Mm-hmm. Tigana Kurwan so um here uh, as uh, it is the case that as long as we remain within samsara there are all of the um, there's the phenomena of this world, of this life. Um, we live in the world and we have our parents and our spouses and our friends and companions, our children and so forth, um, our possessions. Um, so all of these things, um, it isn't like we have to necessarily abandon them, um, but we do need to recognize that ultimately they don't have any real essence. Um, and so if we don't recognize that they don't have any real essence, if we see, then we fall into some idea of permanence and very strong attachment and reliance. We, we think that things are reliable and that they are real, um, but that is not actually the case. And so if we have that view, um, that strong attachment that is based on you know, fixation to some idea of true existence, um, then the only result of that uh, can be suffering. Um, so it's the, the suffering that is um, explained here is that it's like um, a, a raging river or a flood that carries away a sleeping village. 
Um, so while someone, while you are sleeping, sort of unaware, you know, of um, your own ignorance, um, then the water sweeps you away. Mm -hmm. So um, what happens is that we grasp um, to the things of samsara that are actually without or lacking any real essence, we grasp them as though they truly have an essence. Yeah. Tina, that's a new song, say at New Boy, your marriage, that's a good one. New Boy song, say at the Chetanga, so oh, that bet Chachana, Niki Pama, Niki, Chora, Jemen, Kandina, Yang, Zulite, Kandina, or Taco, New Boy, your mother, that kind of your marriage, Tinde Maris. You can dig now, like you. So Pama, Tigano Yigita, Jig Karsegore, Chua Jimen, Relate, Tigano Yigita, not to Jig Sanga member, Senadi, Jig Tigano Yi Sentient Tam Jilpe, one a Jig Pentorchia, a young Karsegoreta, Rokochia, Zeochia, Ninji Gumia, Chamba Gumia, Hola, Sobala, as much as possible, or Chigu Yores. But this is not to say that, um, oh, it has no essence, so we should just like not care about it at all. Um, because actually we have to take care. We, we have to, even understanding that um, the phenomena of samsara lacks any real essence, we still have to attend to it. We still have to take care of it, um, especially when it comes to other beings like our parents, um, our husbands and wives, our relatives, um, our um, children, all are like all Sangha members, sentient beings. Um, we have to benefit them, we have to help them, we have to have love and compassion for them as much as possible. Um, but at the same time, we have to have some degree of detachment that recognizes their illusory nature, that recognizes that there is not really any real essence there. ご両方立てて調べさせていただいてるんですが、で、こう、ランギロ。やっぱこんな感じ。あとが引き出てる。うん。うん。お互い知らないよ、マリス。ヒグメンス。うん。が出来んだ。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。う
so there are these, um, you know, the four or the sufferings of birth, old age, sickness, and death, and there's also the suffering of, um, you know, being thrown together, you know, with people and circumstances that you don't want to be thrown together with, um, or having the suffering of meeting with um, hated enemies. Uh, there's also the suffering of being separated um, from loved ones, um, essentially like getting what you don't want and not getting what you do want. Um, and when we really know this nature, um, if we don't really know these natures, then there is resistance. There's sort of this underlying expectation, expectation that somehow we can escape suffering, like that, that we can avoid getting sick, we can avoid getting um, old, we can avoid dying, um, or those that we love, you know, we can um, somehow ward off their illness and death. Um, but, you know, and, and this can be sort of a subtle underlying belief that kind of goes unnoticed thinking, oh, I'm not going to get sick or I'm not going, I, you know, th this sort of um, idea that somehow we are immortal or that we won't have to suffer, that we won't have to get sick, that we won't get, have to experience aging, that we won't have to die. Um, and so that's not understanding. That's a sign that we're not really seeing accepting the reality of things or seeing things as they truly are. And as long as there is um, this rejection of the true nature, as long as we don't accept or really realize how things are, then there is suffering. Um, and so when there is acceptance of the, the true nature, um, full acceptance, that then this kind of causes all of our grasping um, to unravel. Um, and there is much less suffering. Um, it, the, the less grasping and fixation or trying to make things permanent and reliable that are those things which are inherently impermanent and unreliable, um, then uh, the, the less that we try to do that, then that our the degree of our suffering corresponds directly to the grasping. Um, so if we have no grasping, then there is no suffering. Um, and in fact, then when we get sick, um, there is, uh, we are happy. When we die, um, we are happy. Um, it, it, and on the other hand, you know, when there is grasping, um, then, you know, somebody that we love dies and we say, oh, I'm so sad, I'm suffering so much uh, because um, somebody has died. Um, but this is also because we don't, we're not accepting the true nature of things. We don't really understand reality. Mm -hmm. So no matter we have uh, or suffering or cry or don't want, but this is just nature, so not come back. So I think I, before, uh, sort of interesting, like I, I said, this uh, uh, or this world or secular existence, right, mm -hmm. Korwa? Yeah. Is, it is like, um, what is the um, illusion, right? So, but we can uh, kind of ignore that illusion, you know, just push away, not like that. So we, and, First, uh, very important part is how to understand the illusion in the cyclic existence. If you're understanding the cyclic existence, then you can hold the cyclic existence, which means you have to take care of yourself, and take your friends, take your parents and the loved ones, uh, you hold, you know, help. But at the same time, eventually, and naturally, the separation, like for instance, the difficult part is say, aging, that separation. So mostly we don't understand the nature. 
So I don't want to die, you know. I don't want to die my husband. Or I don't want to my children say. Uh, or I don't want to separation my children or husband or friends. But not does not work. They naturally separate. Anyway, they separate. It's naturally. No matter you can hold. I remember. No matter I, how hard you hold. Yes, I remember. He said, "Oh, uh, one time I heard, oh, I don't want to. My husband is not really ready to die. <laughs> they had no choice, you know. I try to hold I, because I like. I really like love, you know. Really need." You know, but I'm nature, not ready for him to die. Yeah, no ready yeah. to go die. So that's much, if the concept, that much difficult suffering. No matter you how hold, you don't want to die. Anyway, they die, nature. That's, the nature comes, they cannot, no one can escape. It. Even though we said powerful, um, or miracle person, or like, Powerful, like for instance, Pema Sambawa. So the Pema Sambawa, I think, King Sonse uh, Gombos, no, no, sorry, this King Tison Deten's daughter died. So this is very young. I think he was 80 or 60 years old, the eight, like one eight or one six. So the King's daughter. So then Mm. So the king with the Pema Sambawa, so he knows that Pema Sambawa is power, miracles. So the king said, I really, really don't want to die to my daughter. You please, you know, please help me. So he said, the Pema Sambawa said, I tie. So then, then this, the Pema Sambawa has power. So the daughter's consciousness bring to her body three times he did. But look, like he just look, look up at one second, sort of look up my body, they die. And then same thing three times he did. So they almost said, no, that's it. So this nature, the no ones. Yes, your daughter, you want the his, you know, you don't want to die, but nature comes. He said he cannot do anything. So then you that tell you that that's all curry run ye say at him go da. Curry run ye he be not need to chung you have cook you know. Tiny could take a deeper way, deeper sense, sense. Carry on was not, that I'm not so enjoy. Tiny be tiny get can eat your maris, do need your maris. In a copena chavina, Telago, Chivala, Gawajea, Navala, Gawajea, separation china, Gawajea, Yoris in a superficial way, the summer, Dungi Rangi, in a deeper way, Koji, Tadun Korampi, not losing the joy, happy. Kuri Rangi Hina, Tene, Kunyangendi, Yubanese, Tan Kuri Rangi Mayena, some of the Nija Hanra, Kanichin, and also the co satisfied Kan Yung to Gayama, no matter Karmel Karimi Naya. Mm -hmm. um, so mainly it comes down to really knowing and accepting the nature of suffering, knowing the nature of samsara. Um, so if that is the case, if we know, you know, then when we experience these times of loss and hardship, you know, death and um, illness and so forth, even though on a superficial level, there is suffering. Um, on a deeper sense, you never lose your joy. Um, and on a, in a deeper sense, you, you're, you're always free from suffering and difficulty. Um, and uh, on the other hand, when we don't know the nature of samsara, then we never have any um, peace. We never have any joy, or real joy or happiness because not only are we completely overtaken by suffering, um, but we also are always trying to seek happiness in that which can't really provide happiness, and so we are always feeling unsatisfied. Mm -hmm. So one time uh, I have experienced um, 
so we uh, I think 90 what is the 80 nine mm, so we did like kind of protest towards you know communist government anyway so the situation is the uh, the army captured me and that's I of course I did it with my friend we tried to run away first they did in the port you know the corner and then we look we count a lot of people actually that time but then sort of like can run looks like can run away this one corner in the woods so we are I first try to go to really like going to pee you know other than I come back I did a couple of times maybe it looks okay you know mm. so finally we did but actually they know what they're doing so then like seven armies they killed really they do so then this just the gang you know had my head so this uh one hand is like a bit scary too you know so is everybody following so he was trying he was trying to escape um and that he thought there was like this corner where it looked like there might be a way to escape but it looked really difficult so he went like tried out like to go pee and then come back and then he just ran for it and tried but they captured him mm -hmm. and then they put him in the back of a car he didn't say or a truck and held um seven soldiers were holding guns to his head mm -hmm. so but then this kind of interesting so, so what that time is uh, yes of course maybe they killed me you know that's all scary part of sort of but since they I kind of like the deeper sense is really not really scary and not uh, worry about the death but kind of remember you know Buddha Dharma or Aichi or just practice uh, so the situation so I say this uh, even though very difficult condition but same time is not terrible is suffering so that's not the one got the difficulty not all power no cheat we or my this so it wasn't it's not like it, um the difficulty could overpower him so but otherwise we're thinking about like a bad situation that's all well, when they killed how many this it may be jail how many years how many tortures those things the scary things but i really not much uh pay attention that so so that's i think this the, the love where the reason is in a chatang and jitendi nala kanye mewachi yung matala imba never ever this uh satisfied you can be not satisfied with you know what is tongue and take some perfect peace or the Korean and take some somebody your mother's in a some note of my so in the same way like uh when the nature is understood then regardless like whatever the difficulty whatever the suffering um it can't really overpower one um, on the other hand, you also know that you can't really find any real satisfaction or, the worldly sense. or um, fulfillment, you know, by through worldly gains, through worldly things. Um, so there's no way that this world can ever bring you true satisfaction, no matter, you know, how much you have or what your goals are and what you achieve. Um, it, you're never going to get to a point where you're like, now I'm really good. Now I'm truly happy. I have everything that I want and need in a worldly sense. There's no real satisfaction to be found there. The only way to find satisfaction is inwardly in the mind um, and with understanding um so if you know the nature of things as they truly are um and there is a true fulfillment um inwardly in your heart and mind then no matter what the circumstances you are satisfied the satisfied see the culture goes in a culture in a relative level it looks like very bad 
Kindi ina yang kotam kibu yowa. Relatable level ta de dubo re zambi ki loji yowi ina yang te yang tine koji kodi not losing the happy. Tindi yowana ta kodi yowana ta kodi yowana ta kodi yowana ta kodi yowana um, and so in that case, you know, whatever happens on a relative level doesn't affect your inner um, sense of bal balance and well-being. So even if outwardly on a relative level things look really bad, you're still, you may recognize that on a relative level things are pretty bad, um, but it doesn't cause you to lose um, that inner sense of fulfillment and peace. Then the, even the relative level, like kind of, there are many things going on, but still you can sleeping, good sleeping. That is your data. Who is job a mind? The pie mind, yeah, Jimmy. She will want to cheap on now. Um, so lot of the job minds. Uh, your children are no haven, nor are your parents or kin. Once under the sway of death, not even your dearest friends can help you. So the altar <coughs> reads, um, sons cannot protect you, nor father, nor any relatives. When you are assailed by the ender, there's no protection in your kin. That thing other than the Tiwa, that page is Hingo Jedi, Chiba Gutu, say a Jiori. Chiba Gutu, Slogdua, Chiba Gutu. In that Chiba Gutu, Tama Tang, Tanga Tango, Mino Ina Yang, Tanan then Magiri, Pamiki Jab to Gumari, Duke Jab to Gumari, Tigana Yiki, Pehak Jab, Bonjour Kijab to Gumari. ชื่อดังเท่าเจอชื่อดังเท่าเจอโอ้ตัดชื่อดังโอเคอ่าที่ก็น้องยิ่งจิตตาท้าวฟอร์ลามันรูปตองอ่าที่นี่คือจับทุ
do what we can, for instance, if we're ill and there are medicines, there are um, things that we can do, you know, to maybe, you know, um, avoid, pre, you know, premature death and things like that. Th that's very important. But eventually, even if we are able to hold off death a little bit by eating the right medicine and so forth, eventually we, we will have to die. So there's no way to escape death. Um, and so the acceptance of death is very important. If you um, don't accept illness, if you don't ex accept death, then when you are ill um, and when you die, you will really suffer. Mm -hmm. So then the next verse says, those who are wise, those endowed with restraint and good conduct, understand this powerful message of death and quickly clear the path to nirvana. And the alternate verse reads, knowing this for a fact, the wise one restrained by good conduct should quickly clear the path that leads to nirvana. And so what this um, then is both of these verses are pointing to is that, yes, there is no way to escape death. We are going to have to die. And when we really understand that inevitability of death and sort of the essenceless of all phenomenal samsaric things, um, then we know that the only thing that really has any real meaning is um, the purity of our conduct um, throughout our life. So it is pure conduct in the end um, that is the only thing that can help you at the time of death. Mm -hmm. Um, so then uh, the next verse, which is then going into a new cha chapter, says, seeing the vast delight to be gained by giving up but a little joy, the steadfast would give up that joy and aim for the greater delight. Um, the alternate verse reads, if by giving up happiness from material things, he might see a greater happiness, a wise man looking to the great happiness would give up happiness for material things. No, I think this looks, uh, understand, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> small things um, so what this is saying is that eventually, or essentially, um, we want to always have like a long-term view, you know, always be more concerned or more um, directed toward, you know, seeking the ultimate fulfillment, um, the unchanging happiness, the final result, um, instead of getting caught up in, you know, temporary enjoyments, um, really sort of being focused on seeking immediate happiness, temporary happiness in this life, having, you know, good lots, um, seeking enjoyment in um, food and drink and um, material things and so forth. Mm. And then the next verse reads, if you cause suffering for another while pursuing happiness for yourself, you will attract many enemies and never be free of foes. And the alternate verse reads, if you seek your own happiness by causing pain to others, then caught up in attachment to hatred, you won't be free from hatred. <laughs> Ngonichin Hen Lajik Nobajiya 
china rangle dewan do batela one ye sabno yakbo je tamina tini chora kyun namyala dewa yung maris so this is easy to understand um if we in our pursuit um of like in seeking our own happiness we cause harm to others um there is no way then to really achieve happiness for ourselves that by harming others you will never achieve your own happiness kanje chawa yewar to chawa min ba chere chering chi thanga dan ki hwa mi ba thana sapan perwan jors and then the next verse reads when you neglect what you should be doing and concentrate on what you should not do corruption <coughs> appears with your negligence increasing your impurity <coughs> So the alternate verse reads, um, for what should be done is cast is aside, but what should not be done is done. For in those who are arrogant and unaware, the defilements increase. So essentially it comes down to always maintaining mindfulness and always ensuring that um, you're going in the direction of what is wholesome and avoiding what is not wholesome. And the way to identify that is that um, anything motivated by the absence when 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 attachment is not present when aversion is not present when ignorance is not present that is virtue that is wholesome um on the other hand when attachment is a pre is present when aversion is present when there is ignorance anything um done uh with in those mind states is the nature of non-virtue mm -hmm. Then the next verse is when you are always striving, mindful of the body, not pursuing what you should not do, but continually doing what is worthy. When you are mindful and truly wide awake, your impurities will come to an end. Um, and the alternate verse reads, but for those in whom mindfulness of body is ever rightly undertaken, who do not practice what should not be done, who persevere in what should be done, who are mindful and wise, the defilements go to rest. Mm. Timbe <laughs> And so mainly um, it is mindfulness um, that is our greatest protection uh, because as long as mindfulness is there, um, then we can avoid um, negative conduct. But um, if mindfulness is not there, then it is inevitable that we will fall into negative um, conduct because there is nobody who who actually is like intentionally thinking I'm going to do bad things I'm going to harm I'm going to um, I'm going to practice non virtue so no really you know very rarely um, is there somebody who is really intentionally trying to do what is wrong um, most often it happens because of a lack of mindfulness. Um, because of ignorance. Actually, people think they are doing what's right. They think um, they are doing what needs to be done, or they think they're not causing any harm. They're benefiting themselves um, or others. Uh, but 
mistakes come. Why do mistakes come? Mistakes come because there is the absence of mindfulness. Mm. Interesting. Uh, so we have um, the five faculties. Um, first, he said, mindfulness is interesting. Um, it's interesting, right? We have the five faculties, the functioning of the five faculties. So um, the eyes, seeing form with the eyes, uh, hearing sounds with the ears, um, smelling smells with the nose, um, experiencing sensation with the body, with the tactile sensation, and cognizing um, phenomena with the, or like, um, you know, cognizing thoughts with the mind. Mm -hmm. uh, Is that six? Yeah. And, and taste, thank you. And okay, taste. maybe we get count again one more time. What is Looks like six or five. Six. Yeah, six. six right? yeah. yeah, six. Okay. If you take out mind, there are the five. He mm -hmm. Um, so there are these five, um, but we aren't always really using all five, right? Because or the one who is most powerful among these five is the mind. Mm -hmm. Or these six. Mindfulness five five. Oh, the the Yeah. Five. Yeah. The senses. Senses. Five senses. The faculty. It is the mind that controls um, all of them. So interesting, Rwa. Pena cha shavi na. Kisi same ke control chhi matho bi na. Um, so if the mind is not in control, then for instance, we might be capable of stepping on a snake. <laughs> <laughs> so because like, you know, the mind is somewhere, you know, you have eyes, probably you can see, you know, but if your mind is something else, far away, thinking that, you cannot see the snake, right? And sometimes, you know, the mind is too busy, and then even we can look in something, maybe in front of eyes, they can see eyes there, but still we cannot see words, you know, so. So, and also, The If there's no mindfulness, then everything becomes kind of obscured. Mm -hmm. Routine, the word community, mm -hmm. community, together working. Mm -hmm. um, 
if there is mindfulness present, present, then it is like the other um, five faculties are working together in harmony. They become like a community. Mm. Um, and so if you have mindfulness, then, for instance, if you see a snake, um, all of your um, senses tell you there is a snake presence, a present, and you can identify the danger there um, and avoid stepping on the snake. Mm. Internally, Um, And so that's this external example, but internally it's the same because um, when the afflictive emotions stir, when there's when defilements are present, um, you can recognize that the defilements are present, and so you can recognize the danger, and you can know that that defilement um, leads to non-virtue. Um, and so automatically you can kind of keep going without kind of falling in the trap, into the trap of having the afflictions take hold. So if you don't um, have mindfulness, then you can see sort of temporary, you're, you're operating from a place of temporary gratification. So you can see like, temporarily oh this is what i want this is what's going to bring me happiness but you're you're totally blind to the long run you can't see what the outcome is what the effects of of the long long run are right so interesting you know so some things <clears throat> sometimes if you work or something you so something like first maybe you're too exciting like a bit you're doing that but then they cannot see the further. So if the mindfulness, yes, you can first step, you, what you're doing, you're exciting, what you're something working on, but at the same time, you can able to see the further the situation, what the, maybe the result, or not exactly result, but you can see the next step. So that's why this mindfulness is, uh, and then also if you have the mindfulness, and then this kind of real protections. So I said this is like before, maybe not losing, like totally not losing the kind of happy and joy. Because you can like control, you know. Not losing it completely. Right. Mm. But like for example, you really work hard, you know just hard work, extremely. But then your mind is like a kind of slow down the situation. This is not like permanent, not like details, but uh, not really, you physically work extremely hard, but you didn't, you know, not much worry. Still, you know, mindfulness there. And then the, you're not, not that hard, you know, not that tired. But this, 
sort of like everything like kind of keeps the mindfulness is look really is to like keep control or try to make everything or just make balance. I think so, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so ああ、ね、ワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワンドワン
And these two attachment <coughs> aversion are like an indivisibility. Um, they are never, there's never the presence of one without the other, and they are directly proportional to one another. So it's like, um, it is said that it's like um, the growing of two, the two ears of a horse. Um, they grow together. Um, so it's not like sometimes like one ear is higher than the other and vice versa. <laughs> um, they're right there, like parallel and um, equal height um, from one another. So it's the same with attachment and aversion. Shitty co foundation scenery, the root scenery, the tea you did a grochigore, car grochigore, gangeta, grochigores. Gang you growing, doing it oji, it's a good stack, gang it oji. And so we, you know, we refer to this as samsara, we refer to it as suffering. Um, and, and again, the, that the foundation of this is unawareness. When aware, unawareness is present, Immediately, these um, these are growing. Um, attachment and aversion are growing, and therefore, um, the phenomena of samsara is growing. Therefore, suffering is growing. Ti indi ta karsana nga tu nyamne chiala damanda yorwa. Okay, so practice. Jeneng gungu yonare, zongreng gungu yonare, nga dangu yonare, paro chindo nyamne chigi yonare. A Kandarian could reason Chigoyak Gopa Jimson, Kachi Gorsena, Tanga to Kale Jaratela, Dini put the Mevasoya Dini book one your chim mother with a tenichigging as a lamala molam jagunari, a canichigunari, what a total somata, mixati, target Dini for this. And this is <coughs> to kind of the target of our practice is really to um, annihilate these two. No matter what our practice is, that is the whole point of practice, whether we are practicing the generation stage, whether we are practicing the completion stage, whether we are reciting mantra, whether we're practicing um, the six perfections. What is the reason for all these different methods in practice? So like, what are we really working so hard to achieve? Um, we are working uh, so hard to uproot um, these defilements, um, to not fall under um, the control or the influence of these defilements. Um, that's what is all about the rest, uh, um, you know, doing the recitation of aspiration prayers and so forth. That's our target. Our target is to cut down um, the mind of attachment and aversion. End of suffering, the end of the samsara. So, <clears throat> um, and that is the the end result is um, achieving that which um, it then is uh, freedom from samsara. That's the end of samsara when we uproot um, the mind of delusion when there is no longer attachment, aversion, and unawareness. That is Buddhahood um, when we there is no longer any possibility. Um, to fall under the influence of those defilements, then we have really achieved the end of suffering. That is nirvana. That thing do as long as Kandiji in Binaya, when a church or some more coming or Nan Kepai, Nayaboy, Nanyamachi was some Natia and Cheng de Grace, Chick Nakepai, Nayak, and a Dalman was some of the town that all young was outside in it, Chumabochi, Nanyamachi, Tanga, Jig, you, my realization, you, Tinidoji, Sabina, as long as Tian coaching your race. And we have to be careful because Dharma itself. 
um, can bind us deeper um, into attachment and aversion. Um, as long as we are sort of caught, you know, in this duality, or we think, oh, I'm really good, I'm really practicing Dharma, I am really studied, I'm well learned, um, I'm really good, um, I have accumulated all of these mantras, um, I am really a great practitioner, I am really developing realization, um, then actually as long as these uh, thoughts are there, then the Dharma itself is binding you. Um, it is, as is said, um, you know, whether you bind yourself with a golden chain or a, an iron chain, um, you are bound regardless. Um, mm -hmm. Naturally, Kesi <laughs> Um, and so actually Buddhahood um, is often referred to as attaining um, the like um, the attainment of non-attainment um, because actually there's nothing really to be obtained. Um, so until you get to the state where you, there's no concept of getting anything, uh, reaching any state, obtaining anything, until you are really beyond um, the mind of hope and fear, um, and there's no concept, you know, of um, you know uh, uh, of attainment, uh, then it it is one. It sure. isn't until that concept of attainment is no longer there. Um, that true attainment, the attainment yes, of non-attainment, mm -hmm. is attained. Um, and um, at that point, automatically, sentient beings are benefited. Um, and whether there is not even any thought to benefit beings, it just happens naturally. Um, so there's no concept like I am benefiting beings. Um, but naturally, sentient beings are benefited. Um, and uh, um, this, it, at that level, you know, whether somebody is called a teacher, whether they're not called a teacher, whether they are um, have the name Lama or they don't have the name Lama, whether they are recognized as a Buddha or not recognized as a Buddha, um, it is only at that level, at that stage, where there are no many, no longer any concepts, you know, uh, based on hope and fear, attainment and non-attainment. Um, that you are no longer bound. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that is the great attainment of non-attainment. Mm -hmm. The great um, attaining that which is there, you know, that which is actually. Right. And also this, uh, yeah, they, you said the Naroba, you know, so Naroba. But he is, he is a really practitioner uh, and he is really scholar. So he actually he not got there completely, you know, Buddha food. Uh, so, so that time is like um, the pit instruction. So first they said, do you remember this? Uh, he looking for, or the Tiloba, uh, so Tiloba. So then he just going everywhere, you know, in the forest, oh, where's the, 
the Tiloba. So then this one guy he saw, so the K, you know the Tiloba, where is Tiloba? So then he said, yeah, I know the Loba, where is, please, you know, please, please show me the Loba. Yeah, sure, yeah, I can show you, but you, first you help me. So then Naroba really happy, yeah, sure, of course, whatever, I can help you, you know, so if you show me the Loba, so then sort of he's kind of willing to happy, but then, oh yeah, really, I want to tell them my parents, help me. So then Naroba said, no. <laughs> that I can help. So then, Tila Yorwa, Katikatsachi, Chaban, Pama Masina, Chotelun Yigmar, Statelun Yayomaris. So then um, he responds, the person responds by saying, until and unless you can kill the m mother and father, the parents of attachment and aversion, you will never find Tilopa. But that is that one near Waku. Cotelopa say at the founding only the Loba Chech in La Maritin Taco, the Ransom Chuk, you talk over Cotelopa, one in a ton of Roa, or the teas, ten or in Roa. You then the Zoo chewing the Bemisi Vicata, uh, the Zachin Borinua. And so that's really um, how it really is because what is being referred to there is um, realizing um, the realization of one's own mind as Dharmakaya. Um, so that is the true meaning of the Lama. Um, and so until attachment and aversion are thoroughly uprooted, um, then one uh, cannot uh, see one's own mind as, or one does not realize um, the mind as Dharmakaya. And so here, so in this verse, that's what is being referred to when it says when he kills um, the parents. Here it says in the English, desire and pride. Um, but he was saying attachment and aversion. Um, and then the second one is um, killing the two, the kings of the two royal houses. Mm. Gavajik <laughs> Um, and then, um, so these two royal houses, he is explaining in the same way as representing um, a, a, the um, mistaken graspings or view uh, the views of eternalism and nihilism. Um, so usually um, one falls into one or other of these extremes, like the, the tendency is usually actually the tendency of eternalism because um, that et eternalism is the thought that like this world is real, everything truly exists, um, then when we get what we want or things are going our way, we are happy and we become very attached to this. Um, when things are not going our way, we don't get what we want, we get depressed and we become averse to this. Um, and then there's the other extreme of this, which is the view of nihilism, um, which is based on kind of a a mistaken concept of emptiness. Um, you know, so for instance, from reading texts, um, and then you become attached to a view of emptiness, and you say, well, nothing really exists, everything is empty, so therefore nothing really has any meaning. And then one becomes kind of careless, thinking, oh, you know, everything is not real anyway, and so therefore there's not really, you know, any real, you know, the virtue is empty, non-virtue is empty, so, um, kind of, it doesn't really matter. Everything is pointless. Mm. And so these two are actually um, mistaken views. So one either falls into the side of eternalism or one falls to the side of nihilism. Mm. Oh, that's it. That's it. Me, me, not, 
so it's just it's worded a little bit differently in the in the English. Um, uh, so then as it says and destroys the people of the kingdom um referring to you know the outcome so here it says the samsaric mind um but here you know based on the mind of attachment and aversion um based on um the mistaken views of eternalism and nihilism then there's all of the phenomena of samsara and so that um then is killed mm -hmm. uh, so then the next verse is a man goes sinless and is a true brahmin when he kills his parents desire and pride kills the two heretical kings and destroys the five royal tigers, the five skandhas obstructing nirvana. Um, mm. So then the, the alternate verse reads, after killing mother and father and two Brahmin kings and destroying a tiger man as a tiger man as fifth, the Brahmin walks unharmed. Mm. Okay, so he said that is like basically the same thing, that verse. Okay, so then the other verse is, the followers of Gautama's teachings are always awake, always well awake. Day and night, they are mindful, always mindful of the Buddha. And then the um, alternate verse reads, Gautama's disciples are always wide awake. Both day and night, they are ever mindful of the Buddha. <laughs> And so then the next two verses are the followers of Gautama's teachings are always awake, uh, always well awake, day and night they are mindful, always mindful of the Dharma. And then the next one, same thing, the followers of Gautama's teachings are always awake, always well awake, day and night they are mindful, always mindful of the Sangha. And it's basically the same in the alternate verse. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Remember three jewels. Mm -hmm. No matter. All from. Okay, so my short dedication. Okay, so we can close then with the short dedication on page twenty-four of the prayer book.
by the virtues collected in the three times by myself and all beings and samsara and nirvana and by the innate root of virtue may i and all beings quickly attain unsurpassed perfect complete precious enlightenment may the teachings of the great Rikungba, ratna shri who is omniscient lord of the dharma master of interdependence continue and increase through study practice contemplation and meditation until the end of samsara okay so there is no question right no questions <coughs> were there any questions on the zoom no. okay Perfect. thank you have a great day thank you have a good day have a good day Thank you from the Zoomies. Thank you. Have a joyful day. Gracias, Lama. Gracias, Soldi. Feliz tarde. Is there anybody who didn't get money for us? Did you get? Tom, you didn't? Oh, okay, I said Tom. And Gimel, did you? No, okay.